Okay. It is Thursday, June 29th, 2023, and we are going out to the garden to look at the progress. Oh, somebody's running around here. Definitely have to feed these boys. Okay. These are my climbing dianthus, I think. I really should start writing all these down. But I have these beautiful, what they call obelisks, which are basically these trellises that are standalone. And I'm going to plant them in these planters. Goes right there. And I have four of them. I've got four plants. And I will dot them around the yard. So let's see where we stand. <laughs> because it was raining so much, I moved these plants into a container. This is my lemon balm and my white lantana, which did not die. I think one of them might have, but I'm going to see if I can revive it. Here is my beautiful Granny Smith apple. I will end up cutting that in August. I had a video already of me harvesting my blueberries, and you see that some more of them are starting to ripen. Now, from my experience, my strawberries are over here, and I have chipmunks, and birds, and squirrels. The strawberries were definitely bitten into. These blueberries were not. I bought bird netting and was prepared to get all of that ready and set up. But I think because I have bird feeders, one, it's not up right now, but there's one normally that hangs there and a few over here and a squirrel feeder from over there. Once I put those up, I did not see any nibbles from my blueberries or my strawberries. So we'll see. We do have new strawberries coming up. These again are a little slow to grow. And I have this native cute wild cucumber that's taking over that I have to weed out, but I'll get to that eventually. Um, and these strawberries are starting to throw runners, which I think is adorable. And I think I just might let them run all over the place if they want. Um, but I do have a next the next batch of strawberries coming up. You can see those are forming already, and we'll see if having the bird feeders helps with that. Okay, and there were storms for quite a few days in a row, so all of my weeds are growing, and everything is everywhere because the wind blew them all over the place. Here is my gold metal rose, and... It is starting to get a bud, which is great. That one has not died. It took some time to acclimate. Again, I think this really enjoys the warmer weather. Here are my cherry trees. Doing fine and well. A little nibbling from animals, but I don't see any serious disease happening, which is good. This is my fragrant cloud rose, and I don't see any growth on it at all. There's still some resistance in the root, so we'll just allow that to continue to grow and see what it brings us. Here we have my elderberry plant, which looks sadly underwatered. I did not water it because it is supposed to rain for the next four days or so, so it will get rain eventually. This is my service berry is doing well and continuing to grow. I'm going to try to write it, but because the wind blows so strongly, I really want to keep it this way because it leans into the wind and I think that's keeping it somewhat upright. Let's go over here. Oh, I really have to weed this to my grape leaves. This one really needs to be trellised. And I do want to get a trellis up, but I am prioritizing my time for weeding and other things. 
here is my other great belief that is reaching out for someplace else to go and I will have to figure out how to gently unwind all of those tendrils to get it onto the new trellis but that is pretty impressive growth I mean that's almost half an inch if not already half an inch and I don't see any major damage so I don't think anything's really eating it and over there that I think I zoom in that is my third vine uh, grapevine that I thought was dead and I believe what's coming up is from the root stock not from the graft so I'm just gonna let that grow because that was considered dead so that was a loss to me anyway and I'm gonna check to see what takes its place over here we have my pineapple guava and that seems to be doing very well lots of new growth lots of leaves getting bigger and funny enough the spider webs are gone so that's good you might see some of these bright berries over here that is from that italian alum um, you'll see that throughout and <laughs> here is the little corn patch that the squirrels and chipmunks decided to grow. But yes, those berries are first covered by what looks like a fuzzy reed. Um, I think that's what they're called, you know, by the ponds. It looks like reeds, looks like that. And then once that peels away, these berries are green and they display and now they're red. So I should look them up a little further. Next up, we have my apricot. Oh, I am. This is very exciting. Okay, so let me zoom out. This is my apricot. This is my early golden apricot tree. This is my pawpaw. And I'm going to try not to get into the spider webs, but this is my pawpaw, which is a brand new tree. That is. This right here is my unknown apple, and as you can see, my marigolds are growing. That's very exciting. I planted those a while ago. I think I had three in here. I don't think the last one made it. No, I probably covered it with this thing, but that's exciting because, you know, the whole point of permaculture is to share what you got. Okay. Here are my apples. Now at first, I wasn't sure what the heck this was, but then I did some research and I found out that is a woolly aphid, a woolly apple aphid. And as you get closer, they like do this dance and it's disgusting and they're like cotton balls and you can spray them with alcohol or you can wash them off with water. I don't want them to get onto any other trees, so I think I am going to the nursery this weekend and getting some ladybugs because ladybugs love to eat aphids and I have tons of food for the ladybugs. This other tree over here is a crabapple tree. And let's see if I can get through here without going through any spider webs. Oh, too late. Went through the web. Okay, well, whatever. Okay. This was the original Granny Smith apple, which is not doing anything. And if I pull it up, there is some resistance. So I don't know if it's getting any roots growing, but that's fine. We're going to leave it there. This was the pruned tip of the other Granny Smith apple tree. So that we'll see if anything happens with that. That also has some resistance, so I'm not going to mess with that. This was my Red Delicious, and I believe this fell prey to the, I'm not sure, I think this might have fallen prey to the frost because it bloomed early, And but I thought Red Deliciouses were okay, up, especially up in New York, and I don't know, we'll see what happens. It's not, I mean, these are not dried out, so we'll take a look. And then that final apple tree in this container right here. That is an unknown because it's not been marked. I have no idea what that is. And I do have a successful marigold over there. 
I did start planting out some of the plants that I rescued. This is my white lantana. That's actually doing really well. Lantana have these crazy runners for roots and it loves big containers. And if I put it in a small container, it does well for a season and then it disappears. Um, I do have a lot of success with the lantanas in the front yard because there's a lot of sun and they are drought tolerant. You can basically not give this plant water for, I don't know, maybe two weeks and it's been okay. It digs deep and it gets water wherever it can. And in containers, I find that they're definitely more successful in terracotta containers, but this one was big enough that I figured, you know, there's plenty of room for movement and airflow and everything. And it's doing great. I mean, it's already, it's already growing. Over here we have our plums, and they have been a consistent success so far. Nothing really seems to get it as far as diseases. I mean, there looks like there may be some sunburn, if anything, maybe some just a little bit of leaf curling. It's probably due to be watered, but again, we're going to get some rain soon, and that is going to do the job. Now here is a very successful marigold. And again, these are my, any marigold you see in these containers are from seed. These are one of the only successful seedlings that I've been able to get out because I've been so bad and so ne negligent. And yeah, I think I have over here a calendula leftover. What is this? Oh no, this is a lupine. This is a lupine. I have one. I have a few lupines seedlings. So this weekend I plan, and of course I'm going to say it and then I don't do it, but I plan to get all of my pots that I have all over the place and take all of these bags. You can't even see it because I have so much crap back here, but all these bags of soil and compost and whatever, I'm going to mix that up, fill all of my containers and just get rid of the bags because they shouldn't be sitting around. I should use them. And I'm going to fill up what I have left and I'm going to put some pretty flowers in and do some work. Here is a corn plant. Thank you, squirrels. I feed them corn and this is what they give me. They give me corn back, which I'm actually okay with. <gasps> I have my first blackberry. Oh my God. This is so exciting. This in there looks like it's trying to form there too. But this was my blackberry from, from bare root. And I thought it was dead for the longest time. And I put it in here and I spoke kind words to it and I told it it can take as long as it wants to come up. And that that is what I am rewarded with. That makes me very happy. Very, very, very happy. Okay, and over here, I have three. One, one, two, three of those Italian alums. This one right here was over here in the middle of the walkway. And I kept accidentally stepping on it. I think it was actually right here because there's one of the berries. I kept stepping on it, stepping over it. And I was, wanted it to be with its friends, so I moved it over there. And look at my poor nasturtiums. Ugh. I'm trying not to get down on myself for leaving my plants in their, in their original seedling trays, but I just keep remembering I had a lot to do this year, and I probably took on more than I can chew, so I'm giving myself some grace. Anyway, here are my other apple trees. That one is doing fantastically. And that's not even a crab apple. I think that's my Brayburn. That's another one. That's. Hmm. Now I gotta look because that's very curious. That's my Gala apple tree. The Gala is doing the best. And you know what? There are wonderful bugs on here. 
I see minimal ants. I mean, this was crawling with ants the other day. And I put that cinnamon on there. That seemed to do the trick. And I believe that's a crab apple tree. These right here, I think that's a crab apple tree. Let me see. Yep, transcendent crab apple. This I think is my black Arkansas. No, my Macintosh. My Macintosh is not doing great, but I think that's because that also prefers colder climates. Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. Okay, some more corn. Here is my Love Rose. This also has some resistance, so I'm going to let that do its thing and get hot and warm, and maybe it will send off some new shoots. This is one of my newer trees. This is a nectarine tree and this was also growing from the rootstock this part is green but that's growing i'm gonna ride it off for whatever this grafted thing was and just let the rootstock grow and see what i get i think it was only 20 dollars or something like that so that's fine Oh, and my babies. Look at my olive trees. They're so happy. Oh, something is eating this one, though. Oh, I'll have to look into that. Which one is this? Oh, my baroni. My baroni olive tree. Something is eating you. But the other four seem to be fine. They seem to love this weather. Which makes sense because they're brought up in the Mediterranean, and although we don't have the seawater, we do have that humidity. And here goes another patch of corn. <laughs> I am so tickled by this. I think it might have been two years ago, or maybe last year. It had to be last year. I probably tell the story every time, but I don't care. Um, the squirrels got into a whole ear of corn and they pooped it or hid it somewhere and it was adorable because I had corn growing so I actually had ears of corn and I mean that's just a that's just a no effort crop so I'm just gonna let it grow if it gets in my way I will get rid of it that's that's fine but and this oh I have to I have to put I have to give this a trellis and I think what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of this original stalk here because that was what it came with from the store. But once it got to my backyard, it created this whole side shoot. And this is doing so well. I think I'm gonna put that up on something and, and let that grow. This is my store-bought blackberry and then I'll just cut that one once I get this one trellised. I think that will work. Look, I love from the window upstairs, I see that pop of orange and it's so pretty. I love it. There's another one back here, but I think one of the birds or something got to it and knocked it over. It could have been one of the cats. Now this ridiculous mess. Yeah. I'm going to come out here with some cardboard. And I'm just going to lay the cardboard down over all this nonsense. And just annihilate it that way because trying to dredge all this up with all the crap that's underneath it is a pain in the butt haha -ha, so funny story my phone just overheated thanks son <laughs> uh but on to the next item okay so this tree right here was supposed to be my hazelnut tree as i was attempting to weed all of the surrounding area i accidentally bumped into it and it snapped right down. So that tree is definitely dead. So I will probably put um, one of my blueberries back here. I think it would be fun to have a blueberry and a blackberry. Hmm. I don't know. I like to keep the plants together because once they're friendly, I'll probably keep them together. But we'll see. We'll put something else in here. Maybe one of the, oh, I could put one of my white lantanas in here. That would be really happy there, I think. Or maybe even some lemon, lemon balm. Here is one of my two walnut trees, and one of them did not make it, one of them did, so because you need two walnuts to make walnuts, that will just be a small tree in the back. I'll think about getting another walnut tree, but all sales are over for Tai Tai, 
So if I do get one, I have to find someone else who sells bare root or just get it in the fall, which I might just do it in the fall. This is my beautiful pecan tree. And there's another tree behind it that's hiding all of its beautiful growth. So sorry if you can't see it but here. It's growing beautifully. It's very happy and I have to weed around it because this suddenly I must have some kind of muscadine slash uh, what is it called? Cucumber. There's a native little cucumber that has just, if you see all of the yellow flowers, oh, I probably should zoom in. There are small yellow flowers all in there. It's hard to see because I'm not getting, oh, here. See, those are wild cucumber plants. And over here, we have Arizona Rose. It has some resistance, but I think that's on its way out. Here is one of my other elderberries doing well. My love rose. I might have passed this already. Yes, I think we did. Here are my pears. They are all doing very well, and so far, they don't look diseased. Maybe some munching, but I definitely don't see that darkened bark anymore. And I think that was from wind damage, but they're growing bigger. Very happy for them. Here is my kiwi, with all the spiders included. But this is this has come a long way. This kiwi plant has really come a long way. This is the one that has part of it is female, part of it is male. And that's what you need to make the kiwis for this Isai kiwi. This is my gold glow rose. That is not resisting too much. I think that one is also on its way out. Don't know if I'm going to, I'm just gonna let it go for the season. Here are my wildflowers. I just threw the seeds down on top of my bulb plants. Very pretty, attracting dragonflies and other pretty pollinators. Here are my peaches. Insert Peach song from Super Mario Brothers, lol. <laughs> and I have to weed this because I thought I put marigolds in here. And those are definitely not marigolds. So we'll see. Here are... Oh, I'm already getting... Am I already getting a rose hip? Look at that. I should probably cut that off so that it gives me more roses. Because it's not done for the season. But that's a huge rose hip. Okay, I'm focusing. Sorry. There we go. Beautiful. So that's doing okay. And then my other elderberry. Doing great. Whew, it's hot, so I'm going inside before my phone cuts off again. But that is progress. I was able to clean up some of the seedlings, move some of the plants around so I have an easier time walking, and I have to refill the bird food containers. I will probably also get, these are very thin shepherd hooks. Uh, they were about, I don't know, I think maybe 11 or $12 from the Big Lots store. And they work great, but they are not 
really sturdy for heavy plants. So when these get filled with water, they get really heavy. And um, I will probably attach them to the fence posts, but we'll see. Yeah, but that is the progress for this week. I skipped last week because it was rainy and I wanted to see a little more dramatic difference. Check-in every week is is nice, but you really don't see it. It's like looking at the mirror every day. You don't notice your changes until you stop looking at yourself for a month. <laughs> ah, stay cool, everyone. And uh, check in again next week.